Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. And today it is time for This or That episode 16. This is my comparison review series where we take two really similar skincare products and we put them in the ring against each other, ultimately deciding which one is better for you. So today's video is sponsored by Style Vana. Now, as many of you guys know, they're an Asian beauty retailer specializing in Korean and Japanese skincare and makeup. Up products. They've got a really great selection. I always find it fun to browse around and find new things. And all of the products in today's this or that episode can be found on stylevana.com. I also have a discount code for you guys if you want to go in and get yourself a little bit of a goodie and save some money. All of that is in the info box below. So today I'm really excited. I've got a battle between two sunscreen sticks. Oh yes. Between Innis free and is in tree. This is going to be super fun to say both of them at the same time, right? I also have a Panthenol ampule battle between COSRX and Innisfree. And then finally, I'm going to end with a comparison between the Iliyun Adoceramide Lotion versus the Concentrate Cream. So if you guys are so ready to find out this or that, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. <music> So first, let's start with our sun stick battle between the Isn Tree Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sun Stick versus the Innisfree Ado Soothing Sun Stick. Both sun sticks offer SPF 50 PA plus 4 protection. And let's start off with the Isn Tree Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sun Stick. Now this is a chemical sunscreen and it's sporting five different chemical filters. Now this is a mixture between both older generation and newer generation chemical filters. And what's kind of important to note here is the older generation filters, um, you know, they're old, right? They've been around for a little bit longer and um, sometimes they get a bad rep for um, not, you know, being as photostable and maybe even potentially causing some irritation to sensitive skin folks. Now the newer generation filters they're newer, they're bigger, they're better, they're improved. So they really do improve upon the photo stability. They're very photo stable and they also improve upon the sensitivity issue. They're very unlikely to cause irritation in the way that the older generation filters sometimes can. So I do find it interesting to mix both together in the same product. It's kind of like they're lifting each other up, so to speak. The newer generation filters are really helping with the overall photo stability and the um, skin friendliness of the formulation. So a unique feature of the Isentry Sun Stick, the shape of this sun stick, because it has kind of a unique teardrop shape. You see how it narrows in here to a point on one side, and that is to help improve application and protection because this little corner is great for getting into little cracks and crevices of your face, you know, around your nose, kind of like the corners of the eyes, just kind of all those little odd spots. Designing the sun stick like this, at least in my opinion, was very smart. Now, as far as texture, it is a solid balm type of texture. So as you run this across your skin, it actually doesn't like pull on your skin or tug at it at all. It actually just glides really easily because once it kind of makes contact with your skin, it does sort of warm. As far as like the finish on the skin goes, you know, it kind of starts off like you're like, oh, I'm going to be a little bit shiny, but it actually settles into the skin really nicely in just a matter of a few minutes. And that little bit of shininess that you're kind of thinking you might have to deal with actually goes away after it um, just settles into the skin like three, four minutes. It's not very long at all. So I found it really easy and pleasant to use and the texture was not too thick and heavy or waxy like you might expect a solid product like this would be. I found it very comfortable. Next, let's move to the Innisfree Ado Soothing Sun Stick. Now this is a mineral sunscreen that uses titanium dioxide as its filter. Yes, 
one filter. I have to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever seen a mineral sunscreen that only uses titanium dioxide. You know, as you know, there are two mineral sunscreen filters out there, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And more commonly, you'll see formulations rely on zinc a little bit more heavily. You'll see a high percentage of zinc and a little titanium like thrown in <laughs> to the mix or like kind of equal-ish amounts, right? I don't know that I've ever seen a product that only uses titanium dioxide. Now, I mean, it is a great filter. It is broad spectrum. It offers UVB and UVA protection. So it's 100% possible to achieve a, a PA plus four rating on this sunscreen, definitely. And with enough titanium dioxide, you can get SPF 50 as well. It is possible to do it with one. Um, I'm sure that that raises some other questions for some of us sunscreen geeks out there. It's definitely interesting. One thing to, to take note of when you're seeing titanium dioxide being used in a large amount like this is you have to understand 100% you're going to get a white cast because titanium, as you may know, is a component in white paint or white pigment. So it does have a very heavy white cast. And you will get that with this product. So that's definitely a huge consideration for, you know, anybody who's blessed with melanin. Um, this is definitely going to start to give you that chalky gray cast. So, you know, something to consider. Now, as far as texture, again, a solid balmy type texture, but maybe even a little bit softer in application than the is in tree, which was very soft, at least in my opinion, it was very comfortable and smooth. This one just has like a little bit more of a softer kind of feel on the skin. But I also noticed this one left my skin a little bit shiny, um, a little bit, not quite greasy, but there was definitely like a finish um, that was a little bit more shiny on my face. And unfortunately with this one, it never really went away. It never really settled into the skin like the Isn't Tree did. You kind of always notice that there was a little bit of that kind of shiny filminess happening at the top of the skin. So this or that, and I'm gonna hand this battle over to Isn't Tree. Yeah, this is really the clear winner in my mind. And I can really boil it down to about three key reasons why. And the first one is, the filters. You know, as much as the Innisfree, it's totally possible to get coverage with the titanium dioxide. Honestly, I just kind of prefer chemical sunscreens just as a whole. I just prefer them. Um, and I also just feel more comfortable knowing that there are multiple filters in this one offering lots of coverage, you know, and kind of, like I said, the mixture of the old generation and the new generation filters, they boost each other up, they cover each other's back. And so to me, you know, sunscreen is a very personal thing and it's all about what makes you feel comfortable. And I'm not just talking about how it feels on your skin and looks, but how you personally feel, how secure you feel with your sunscreen. And this is just me and my bias. I just prefer the Isn't Tree over the Innis Free. It's super fun to say both of those in the same sentence. Now, the second reason is the application process because this teardrop shape on the Isn't Tree was actually a huge benefit. You wouldn't think that it was, but it really was because applying with kind of thick edge all around your nose and especially it was so hard to get around my eye area and really get into like I said, those kind of awkward corners and crevices, I just felt like I was getting better overall coverage with the Isn't Tree and it really came down to that teardrop shape. But another huge one for me was really how it looked and felt on my skin. Because if you remember, I said the Isn't Tree, it did look shiny at first, but then it actually settles into the skin and just really kind of disappeared into my skin. And it was great. The Isn't, the Innisfree, I told you I'm gonna have problems with this. The Innisfree, the texture's not great on the finish because it leaves you, like I said, kind of filmy and kind of shiny at the top. But even after like a couple hours of wear, if you ran your fingers across your face, you would get some of that sunscreen off. It never quite settles. Like I said, sunscreen's all about creating a film and it's all about how you feel comfortable and just, 
in every sense, I just felt so much more comfortable with the Isentry Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sun Stick. Next up is the Battle of the Panthenol Ampules. This is the Cosrx B5 D Panthenol Ampule versus the Innisfree True Care AC Soothing Ampule. So let's start with the Innisfree AC Soothing Ampule first. So this does feature Panthenol as its star ingredient. They just don't tell you how much is in here. They have sort of rounded out the panthenol with some hyaluronic acid, another fantastic hydrator, um, and we also have propolis extract. Now I was really surprised by the texture because I was not expecting it to be so light and runny. You know, panthenol is an ingredient that, you know, it's not really a sticky ingredient, but it can sometimes have like a little body to it, you know what I mean? A little heft, but this is just so light and airy and breathable. It's got really great absorbency into the skin, like I said, featherweight feeling, but it's not like those types of serums or ampules that feel almost like water. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes you put it on, it's like, where did it go? It felt like nothing on my skin. This has just that little whisper of balancing moisture to it, just a touch that really, like it really balances out your skin's oil and water mix without being overwhelming, without being sticky or tacky at the top. It just goes right into your skin, it feels so good and it just feels so breathable. I can honestly see this working for almost every single skin type because the texture is just so easy to work with. So we have to talk about the uh, packaging and the size because you may have noticed this is a pretty tiny little bottle, right? This is 10 milliliter of product. But when you actually purchase this product on Style Vana, you will get it in a box and it actually comes with four. So that's 40 milliliter of, of serum or ampule total. Now, the Cosrx B5D Panthenol Ampule, this actually does contain 30% of Panthenol, so a really good amount. And I do actually find that reflective in the texture of this ampule because as you can see, it's got a lot more body yaddy to it than the Innisfree does. This is definitely more of the texture that I was expecting from both products. It feels very hydrating on the skin. We get a little bit more of that moisture kind of feel, non-greasy or oily, but just that moisturizing balance to this. After it kind of absorbs and settles in the the skin, you might feel just a little bit of tack on the top of your skin. It is one of those feelings where you're like, Ooh, I don't know how this feels. But then when you put your next layer, like your moisturizer or something on top of it, it's completely gone. It's completely alleviated. So in my mind, it's not a big deal, but I know not everybody loves that feeling and it is something to be aware of. So this product is very similar to the Innisfree in that it is packaged into a smaller um, bottle to really keep the potency. So this um, packaging, this is also a 10 milliliter of product. You're going to get two. So that's 20 milliliter total of the D Panthenol ampule from Cosrx. So this or that. And yeah, we got to talk about the packaging. <laughs> you know, it was coming. I promised you it was, you know, of course, these are definitely not the best choices. Either one of these products, if you are looking to slim down and be more minimalistic with packaging, especially when it comes to your skincare and beauty products, it's not, there's a lot of excessive packaging here. I've seen worse, but, um, this definitely isn't the best. I mean, let's talk about this briefly. You know, the Innisfree Ampule, this, um, is a mini glass dropper bottle. So when you're done with this, you can definitely put this part into the recycling. But as you know, dropper, you know, tops can't be recycled. So you would be putting that into the trash can. But I guess the point I'm trying to make here is because you went for the mini size, then we actually end up with four additional, right? Um, all of these would end up there. So even though the packaging that it comes in is totally recyclable, you would end up with a little bit of extra dropper tops right in the trash can. Now, I mean, if you are still interested in these and trying to make the better choice of the two, I would actually say Cosrx loses here because yes, this is recyclable, definitely, but I don't think any part of this is. I think this entire thing will end up in a landfill because generally caps aren't recyclable. I'm pretty sure this isn't. It has no recycling symbol on it, right? Um, the bottle itself, 
This has like a little rubber top here that you press down to push the ampule out. This can't be removed and that rubber topper definitely can't be recycled. So if you can't part it, if you can't take that part off, they will not recycle it. So like I said, I don't think any part of this would end up being recycled making it definitely between the two the worst choice if you're looking for more eco-friendly skincare but let's talk about the products you know performance and really decide this or that from there and you know i would have to say i do actually like both of these products i don't see anything like glaringly like wrong or like a big red flag with either one of them i find them really enjoyable but i must admit i am a little bit more leaning towards the innisfree which is actually not what i expected um but i just find the texture so easy to work with you know it feels really hydrating but just really light and breathable and although i generally do like a little thicker serum like the costa rex one I just found that the tackiness and the stickiness of it to just not be my cup of tea. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's not a deal breaker, but when I'm looking between the two and being so picky for a this or that, I just, like I said, I naturally find myself reaching for this one a lot more from Innisfree. I also just think it's going to suit the widest range of people. You know what I mean? Because the texture is just so easy all around and so lightweight, but it still gives you that Panthenol punch to it, if you know what I mean. So I just think this is the better one kind of all around, definitely from In Innisfree. The Costa Rex one though, not bad at all. I do enjoy their Panthenol line. It's just the stickiness I could live without. So let's finish off with the Illy Yoon Ceramide Lotion versus the Concentrate Cream. And this is really going to be a very straight comparison review and a little less of a battle because these are almost identical products. <laughs> They're from the same brand. They're from the same family of products, right? I think you can tell that the main difference between these two products is gonna come to you, the texture. But I'm I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself so let's back up just a little bit what are these products you know these are both moisturizers that have ceramides cholesterol and fatty acids in it and you know that I call those three ingredients the holy trinity of barrier care because those are the three components that naturally make up your skin's moisture barrier so you know it is good to add those into your skincare routine when you want to keep your moisture barrier strong or maybe you need to strengthen it back up from being damaged or weakened. And that can happen when you over exfoliate, when you use too many, um, you know, aggressive and strong ingredients. If you are a regular user of retinol or tretinoin, it's great to add these types of ingredients into your skincare routine to uh, cut down on the side effects, you know, of dryness. It's also really good to put these types of ingredients into your skincare routine if you suffer from lots of dehydration on your skin. I know you think that dehydration Hydrated skin needs more hydration and it does but it's actually dehydration is a symptom of a weakened moisture barrier so you got to get to the root of the problem and strengthen your skin's moisture barrier ceramides cholesterol fatty acids are one of the most excellent ways to do that so that's what you know these moisturizers are really well known for is containing those three great barrier supportive ingredients However, if you're scanning this ingredients list looking for ceramide, the word, you're not going to find it. And that's because Iliune actually uses pseudo ceramides, which basically is just ceramides that are made in a lab. Um, so there's actually really no big difference between ceramides and the one that they're using, which you're going to find under the word MEA. There's no difference between the effectiveness or anything like that. And MEA is really just the pseudo version of ceramide NP. Now, as you probably know, in the world of moisturizers, lotion, the word lotion is really going to indicate a texture that's a little bit more light, um, a little bit airy, and a cream is going to be a lot more thick right? And that's really the difference here. That's the this or that. It's the texture. So pick your poison, pick your texture. The lotion is so silky. Wow. Like it feels silky between your fingers, but also once it's absorbed into your skin, it makes your skin incredibly soft. Wow. I love this texture. So yeah, super silky, great absorbency. It's got like a nice moisturization to it. It's just not heavy and it's not greasy at 
all. This just absorbs right into the skin with no shininess, no finish. You know, it doesn't overwhelm your skin at all. It feels so breathable. I would say like in the weight, like how it feels weight wise on your skin, it's somewhere between light and medium. It's not a full on medium type of, of, of texture on the skin. It's still very light but still moisturizing. Now the cream on the other hand, as you can guess and see, it's thicker, definitely it's thicker. And as you move this across your skin, you're gonna notice a really unique element here, these white flakes. These are actually ceramide capsules and these have been really designed by Iliune to keep the ceramide super potent and fresh. And as you kind of work this into your skin, they just melt into your skin and really deliver the ceramides deeper into the skin. Now marketing or not, I don't really know. It could just be a marketing thing, but I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say that is because I love this cream so much. I've been a huge fan of it for so many years. You know, I always talk about it. And so whether it's marketing or not, I don't really care because the cream just works. But let's get back to the texture. So the texture, it's actually medium weight. This is ev not even the thickest or heaviest cream out there at all. This is a very solid medium weight type of cream. And even though kind of like the lotion, even though it nourishes and moisturizes and balances your skin, it just does not do it in an oily, greasy, overly rich type of way. This has amazing absorbency into the skin and it will not leave you shiny at all. Oh, I personally love the cream. This has been my ride or die for many years. It works almost all seasons. Do you know what I mean? It's so good for my skin when I'm a little bit more oily because I'm combination skin. So even when I'm a little bit more oily, this works for me because it's just not, like I said, it's not overly rich. This works for me when I'm more on the dry side because it's comforting. The occlusivity level on this, which is really important for someone like me who does suffer with dehydration, the occlusivity on this is what I would say is medium. You know, it's just enough to fight the transepidermal water loss, but not so much that it makes it feel like my skin is sealed off. So that's another big thing to consider about the differences. The lotion, on the other hand, the occlusivity on this is a lot lower, uh, and that's what allows it to just feel so like, breathable you know what i mean it's it's so much less occlusive than the cream and i actually have been finding myself using and particularly because the bottle is just so big i've actually been using this as a body lotion that's actually something i forgot to mention about both of these these are what are called face and body creams which means they're appropriate not only for your body skin but also for your face skin you can use it head to toe and honestly, why wouldn't you want to? They're nourishing, they're comforting, they're soothing, they're sensitive skin friendly. They've got great barrier supportive ingredients with a texture for everybody. They're both the winners. Big thank you again to Stylevana for sponsoring today's This or That Battle. All the products we talked about can be found on stylevana.com. I've got links to all the products in the info box plus that discount code if you wanna save a little bit of cash on your order. So if you guys love the video and it was helpful to you but you didn't subscribe yet, please consider subscribing to my channel. I release two new skincare focused videos every single week and don't forget to turn on notifications. I hope you guys are healthy, happy, and safe wherever you are in the world, and I can't wait to talk to you soon. Bye.